Have you seen the color blood takes under moonlight? Such a beautiful blend of pale red and sickly green drenched in cold hues of blue. I want you to imagine something. You just started Fear and Hunger 2 Termina, and you're on the train after you picked your character in your backstory. You walk around and you eventually get transported to Rare's Realm, and the Hall of the New Gods as you're about to die when someone seemingly saves you. A man with a painted face and a green robe on a tower, with the moon smiling behind him. He seems pretty okay, and he did in fact save you. And he will even restore all your limbs and health if you're low, so at the very least he is helping you in this instance. This is Perkola, and yes, you'll get me to pronounce it right just for this video. He will speak to you in a monotonous voice, and you can tell he's a master manipulator by the way he speaks. He will answer your questions with even more questions. He is clearly trying to be mysterious. He will tell you about Termina, a festival for his master, the trickster moon god Rare. He'll then let you go, and you'll wake up from your dream. So is Perkola in the dream? Or are you transported to this tower when you try to fall asleep? Let's find out more about this weird guy in a green robe, shall we? Perkola is my favorite character in the Fear and Hunger series, and I have tons of lore videos, so I have to talk about my favorite character eventually, right? So what better time than now? Perkola is first described in Fear and Hunger 1, although technically it was added in an update after Fear and Hunger 2 came out, I'm still counting it as lore for the first game. If you ask the new gods about Perkola, they will say, Perkola and the group associated with that figure, you might recognize them by the body paint covering their faces and body. They are but leeches, leeching on the older gods, pursuing their own agenda. Miserable figures. This is our first hint, chronologically, that Perkola is in fact not associated with Rare, the moon god, because if you recall, Rare is an old god. Perkola claims from the very beginning that he is a servant of Rare. So, is he lying? Of, of course we know the answer, but let's dig a bit deeper. When you get to the very end of Fear and Hunger 2 Termina, whether it be ending B or C, Perkola will tell you the truth. He is not a servant of Rare anymore. So he used to be, at least. He now serves the Sulphur God, a god who revels in freedom, being completely unrestricted by humanity. You can see my video on him at the top left of the corner if you want right here. However, Perkola will tell you, this whole Termina festival has been a farce, pretty much. He doesn't use it to honor Rare like he originally stated, but he uses it to find candidates for his cult to the new god, the Sulphur God. He will only invite you into his cult if you are the last contestant standing at the end of Day 2, instead of Day 3, making you particularly bloodthirsty. He will give you his philosophy then and only then. He will ask you if you really think that anyone in the history of time that was in power really gained it through benevolent means. He will ask you if you think that the powers that be played fair to get where they are, or if they used every dirty advantage if they could. Even if they did do it fairly, look out the window, as Mr. House from Fallout New Vegas would say. There is war, fear, hunger, disease in the world. And what do the people of high society do? They protect themselves. You never see politicians go hungry or go to war or get some uncurable disease, at least not anymore. So shouldn't you do the same? Why shouldn't you play unfairly and look out for yourself and only yourself? Look what the people who listen to kings and queens of the world get. Nothing but fear and hunger. This is Perkola's philosophy. In this case, I think he and the rest of the Sulphur Cult are like the Yellow Mages of the series. They don't particularly worship the Sulphur God, I don't think. I think they just use him because they give them power. Sort of like the Apostles and the God Hand from Berserk. Enough talking though, he will say. Either in ending B or C, it is time to fight. Whether that be for your freedom, or for your indoctrination into the Sulphur Cult. It doesn't matter. If you say you've been waiting for this since day one to kill him, Perkola will say, that makes two of us. Then with a quick bow, he will summon a small moon and, and reveal his true form. Have you seen the color blood takes under moonlight? Such a beautiful blend of pale red and sickly green drenched in cold hues of blue. The best fight in the series will then commence. Perkola is quite the tough boss. He will have two hands and two feet like any humanoid boss. His right hand will have a moon floating above it. This hand is quite dangerous as it can summon lunar meteorites, which do on average about 40 damage per turn. 
His left hand will be a wing that does an attack called Feather Rain, which will hit you for 5 damage 9 times and will cause bleed. However, this attack often misses a couple feathers, making this the less dangerous of the two attacks. My strategy here is to take out the Feather Arm first, because not only can he use it for Feather Rain, it can also block his main body, making you attacking his main HP bar pretty much useless. So you may think, well I'll just take out both arms. This is the biggest mistake you can do in this fight. Because if you take out both arms, he will start using Destruction Magic instead, which is far more dangerous than both Lunar Meteorite and Feather Rain combined. So here's my overall strategy. Use Necromancy and Blood Golems to give Perkla more targets to attack. Because like I said earlier, you have to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. As no matter what ending you're doing, you are the sole surviving Terminate contestant at the moment. Once you're all set up, start the fight and immediately burn or bleed his main body. Because if you don't know, using damage over time moves in Fear and Hunger series is completely overpowered. Then, after you do that, immediately take out his feather arm so he can't block his main body. If you're lucky, the burn or bleed that you put on his main body will have killed him after the arm is taken out. But if not, he shouldn't have too much health left anyway, so you should be able to take him out no problem. He will then die without any more objections. If you're doing ending B, he will then break the chains he has on rare, causing him to fight you. Or if you're on ending C, both of you will die. You will be cast into the sulfur pits and be born anew, into a sulfur cultist. Okay, so that's the main story, but what do we know about Perkola's early life? Well, Perkola was once a Termina contestant just like you, hundreds of years ago. Something awakened in him there, however. He broke free from his monotonous and boring life and became something more. He felt euphoria as he cut down the other contestants in Rare's name. So much so that Rare would make him the winner and eventually the proctor of the Termina Festival from here on out. However, as we've established in several other videos, Rare grew disinterested in humans eventually, and left, no longer holding the Termina Festival. Perkola, who had already stopped following Rare in his mind in favor of the Sulphur God, got an idea then. He would still hold the Termina Festival himself instead, but not to honor Rare, but to find people just like him. People who were bloodthirsty enough to kill everyone before the time limit was up, to find new candidates for his cult to the Sulphur God. Now, whether Perkola is the leader of the Sulphur Cult or not, I'm not 100% sure. If he's not, he's at the very least a recruiter of sorts, so I assume he's very high up in the cult if not the leader. This, however, begs the question how he still has Rare's powers, if he no longer serves him. Well, my theory is that when Rare originally made him the Proctor for the following Termina Festivals, he gave him some sort of power, or perhaps gave him control over the remnants of Rare somehow. Hence, how when he dies, he breaks the chains on him and sort of sicks the remnant of rare on you. He also has Lunar Meteorite, which is considered a rare affiliated magic spell. Now, this is good and all, and we're almost done here, but while writing the script, I had a gnawing question. How do the new gods know about Perkola? Sure, he could have taken control of the Termina Festival before the events of Fear and Hunger 1, but strangely, they also know about new gods that are not yet established. So. Is it possible the Hall of the New Gods is somehow outside of time? And if they are, wouldn't they know of Perkola's death at the end of Fear and Hunger 2? I don't know. So maybe Perkola survives the end of Fear and Hunger 2. I don't know for sure though. But Mira does, and Mira's not telling. Thanks for watching. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one.